What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be an update for the month of October. As some of you know, I was trying to go all of October and November without using any natural gas to heat my house. This is my main source of heat here, the EG4 solar hybrid heat pump. I have 1200 watts of solar up on this pergola. It's been working great and I was able to go all of October without turning on the furnace whatsoever. Now I had originally planned to do it all on solar. I was not able to do it all on solar. October was a horrible month as far as sun. There was you know, seven, eight days in a row where we just got absolutely no sun. So uh, it wasn't doable, not on the system that I have. Um, I would obviously have to make some pretty big upgrades if I was going to heat 100% on solar. So that was a fail. But for the month of November, I am going to change the strategy a little bit. Um, I have a, a different plan. I don't think I'm going to be able to heat entirely on the heat pump. Uh, there was a couple days in October where it really did struggle when we were really cold. As you can see today, we're starting to frost the outdoor coil a little bit below zero today. So I'll take you inside, show you the power breakdown for the month, uh, kind of the indoor temperature and what's going on with the indoor unit. Okay, so it is 9.30 in the morning, October 31st. We did go the entire month without using this thermostat right here. You can see we're sitting at 66 indoor, 29 degrees outdoor. I'll show you the usage for the month. Now I do still have it in cooling mode and there was a couple days where I had a lot of heat in the main floor and I actually flipped it into cooling mode with the breaker off to the outdoor unit just to move some air around, get some uh, warm air to the other bedrooms, to the downstairs, stuff like that. So those are my screenshots. You can see I did not use any heat. So we'll pop over here to the indoor unit. We're going to have a look at the daily power consumption as well as month over month. And I also have a new tool we're going to use to verify the CFM, which will help us verify the COP. If you watched my last uh, coefficient of performance video, you saw I pulled the information from a data sheet. So I have a tool now we can actually test the CFM and we'll verify that and do another check. So here's our power data for the month of October. Uh, you can see we kind of ramp up as the month goes on. Temperatures definitely did get a little colder. This is already today. We're sitting at two and a half kilowatts from grid, 0 0.07 from solar. The sun is just getting high enough to uh, kind of make that change over to solar. So our peak power was 3.5 from grid, 1.9 from solar. Kind of had a, a mixed bag of temperatures. You can see here for October, we pulled a total of 48.2 from grid and 20.8 from solar so like i said a bit of a mixed bag as far as temperature the month started off cold kind of warmed up in the middle and then got really cold towards the end uh, kind of down about minus five degrees celsius so we'll take a quick peek at the cfm once again this is the top tes ts301 anemometer uh, these guys sent it out to me so this is going to be really handy to verify our btu output our cfm output make sure that coefficient of performance data i gave you last video was accurate so Basically, there's another calculation we're going to have to do to uh, get our CFM. It's not as straightforward as just putting it in front of the unit, but you can see we're kicking out about 110 again. Seems to like to uh, sit at 110 degrees. It's pretty much always where this thing's running. So to get our CFM, we have to measure our outlet size, essentially our duct size. So we have two and a half inches uh, top to bottom and about 24 inches side to side. So we need to find the square footage essentially of the duct or the opening of the mini split. So um, two feet times 0 0.208 feet gives us a total of 0 0.416 cubic feet or sorry, square feet. Um, so basically we take the anemometer, put it up close as we can to the ductwork and get a nice consistent reading. And we're going to multiply that number by our 0 0.4, um, our square footage essentially of the duct. So it's leveled off right around 600 feet per minute. So you take 0 0.416 times 600 feet per minute, giving you a CFM of 250 cubic feet per minute, which is very close to the data sheet. If you watched the last video, you might remember it was 256 CFM mm -hmm. from the data sheet. And the rest of the calculation remains the same. So we're gonna take our supply air minus our return air. Um, that's 110 minus 74, giving us a temp rise of 36 degrees. Multiply that by our CFM of 250. Multiply that by 1.08, which is that constant number, giving us a BTU output of 9720. We need to turn that into watts. So divide it by 3.41, giving us 2850. Then we take the power input of the mini split, which is right around 820 watts, punch that in, 
and we get a COP of 3.47. So call it 3.5 and that is at 29 degrees Fahrenheit. So overall, I'm still pretty happy. We were able to accomplish the main goal of not using any natural gas for October. As you can see, I do have the heat pump plugged into grid power right now. Uh, the system is just charging up. It's around 55% uh, state of charge right now. So the strategy I'm gonna be running for November is more of a kind of a hybrid system. Um, our utilities, our electric costs just change for the winter months, their time of use. So essentially from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., electricity costs a lot more. So on the days when it's cloudy, I'm gonna be running the solar heat pump on direct solar as well as AC backup to the AC side from the batteries. So rather than trying to use the batteries at night, I'm gonna be using the batteries during the day when the power is actually most expensive. So I'm using no grid power all day long. Overnight, if I have to let the heat pump run on grid, I will because it's only seven cents per kilowatt. During the day, it gets as high as 18 cents per kilowatt. So the strategy is gonna change. I'm gonna sort of run it uh, that back and forth method and hopefully go the entire month of November using no gas once again. So as always, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the November update. I'll try to keep the gas turned off as long as I can and see what happens.